Hello, good evening and welcome back. Here we have more no good, busy body, virtue signaling twats ruining the lives of everybody else. Or at least degrading our standard of living and making it far more difficult for the poorest among us in our country. We have the climate campaigners win Heathrow expansion case, which could be reframed as the vast majority lose Heathrow expansion case. Why am I taking such a hardline stance on it? Well, for a start, the government shouldn't have been involved in it in the first place. We all know what happened with Terminal 5. But secondly, if they wish to get involved, then don't stop with Heathrow having a third on way. The main battle was between Heathrow having a third and Gatwick having a second. Even though Gatwick already has two, they just don't use both of them because it's an emergency runway. But they could use it if they want to, and sometimes they do. But they could use that or actually have a second purpose-built runway, in which case, by all means, use that. But then others would say, well, you're focusing too much on the South, and London, yes, is the finance capital of the world, but we should spread things more equally among England or the UK, to which I would say we'll earn it. But by all means, if they're having a go-ahead for runways, then <laughs> Manchester as well, um, <laughs> Glasgow, Edinburgh, let's not leave Scotland out either. Um, let's share the love all around by all means and allow people to continue to invest in their own infrastructure and create the the jobs and the boon to economy and the lower cost of things coming in because then you can have that level of cargo and airfare and then of course the taxes gained through landing fees and the, the fuel bought not that they buy that much fuel in the uk given that it is so expensive and they'd rather fly out somewhere else in fact, this is, of course, shown most readily and stupidly by it being cheaper to get a um, <clears throat> a stopping flight instead of a direct flight because the taxes in other countries are lower than the UK. So they're shooting themselves in the foot. For example, if, even if you want to fly to various parts of America or Cuba, and the whole of America, not just the United States, it can be cheaper to fly out to... Um, to Paris, Charles de Gaulle perhaps, and then fly out to America. Or, if you're flying east, it can be easier to fly out to Amsterdam and into Schiphol, and then book a flight from Amsterdam to South Africa or Tokyo by using British Airways to fly back to Heathrow to then fly out again, because it's cheaper than just flying from Heathrow out to Tokyo or South Africa, which is ridiculous, but nonetheless, that's what the British government has decided to do in terms of its taxes. So it makes life more difficult for people just because it's trying to get more money, which it ends up getting less. So stupid ideas, but nonetheless, that seems to be what governments are full of. <laughs> Hence, just leave people alone and we'll deal with it ourselves. So with this in mind, then you've got climate campaigners who, of course, don't really understand the, the problems and say, Oh yes, well, if we don't allow more expansion in the UK, we can fuck up our economy, and therefore we won't be producing so many greenhouse gases, or producing so many pollutants, or waste, or whatever they're concerned about now, because they can't actually <laughs> answer any direct questions. Or the, maybe they can, but then they can't answer any follow-up questions. They say, oh, CO2 is bad. It's like, oh yeah, it's so bad. Now that plants are growing <laughs> faster than before, and you've got new lush areas in the Sahara, where well, you haven't had that before. Sorry, why is that a problem? It's like, oh, oh, um, we, we can't breathe carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide bad. So the carbon dioxide is in 0.04% of the atmosphere, and we're responsible for 3% of that. And then the UK, about 3% of that 3% of that 0.04%. Right. I'm not seeing the problem here. It's like, oh, methane, 27 times <laughs> the effect of carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. So like we're talking about aircraft here. What's, what are you on about? It's like, oh, because it's higher up, it's... Bad for the ozone layer. So, yeah, but that isn't having any effect, though, is it? No. Right, there was supposed to be a big ozone gap, wasn't over Africa a few years ago. What's happened there? Nothing. Oh, right, I see. So, well, what are you actually doing? Are you just trying to make yourself feel good because you can actually afford the luxuries that... <laughs> oh, you can actually afford the luxuries given that you're earning more because you're, you've got a better wage and therefore you don't have to worry about subsistence living as opposed to the people that are actually caring about just getting by day to day and therefore don't have the income to actually worry about the, the climate, whether there's something going wrong or not, given that it's a very middle to middle upper class concern to have. 
the poor people are, as I say, just struggling to get by on day to day, and you're making their lives more difficult. So what the fuck are you really doing? I don't understand your motives anymore, because if you actually look into it, you'll see you're full of shit. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, debate me. So controversial plans for a third gone wide Heathrow Airport have been thrown into doubt after a court ruling. The government's decision to allow the expansion was unlawful because it did not take climate commitments into account. Heathrow said it would challenge the decision, but the government said it would not appeal. So the government got them into this mess and just went, yeah, sorry, sorry guys, yeah, we said it would cost 14 billion, late assessments 32 billion, and now we're not going to do it at all. Just let Heathrow get on with it, let Gatwick get on with it, anybody else who wants to get on with it, let them get on with it as well. Very, very simple fix there. And if they decide it's not worth it because actually the boost to the economy isn't worth the investment and um, worth the people moving through their terminals, then fair enough, it won't be done. Very, very simple. Instead of the, the government having to force people to pay for things which they may or may not support. And so why should these protesters get their way instead of people who want it done? What, so you'd rather spend my money on something else that I don't support? So, brilliant, why don't we just get to choose where we spend our money? And I will support airport expansion by using those airports, and you can decide to not. So, you can decide to not fly at all. Obviously, if you use a boat, it's most likely going to be worse for the environment, seeing as they're that much smaller. And if you use the train, then it's also going to be worse for the environment, given the tracks that have to be put down. But I'm sure you'll just walk or cycle to your destinations across the world, because you can actually afford to travel across the world. Oh. Right, so you seem to be screaming at people who aren't actually doing anything nearly as wrong as you. So what, you're just trying to atone for your sins by throwing shade onto other people? Brilliant. The judge has said that in future, a third gone away could go ahead, as long as it fits with the UK's climate policy. Yes, well, given that the air traffic is going to be there anyway, we're just not allowing it in our country. So if it was allowed in our country and you really wanted to push the climate change ideas, then you can tax them use that money in order to have carbon neutral or whatever climate ideas you have, you can actually gain money from that traffic in order to invest it into the other ideas to make it carbon neutral or methane neutral or climate friendly, <laughs> however you wish to phrase it. And through doing that, because of the increase in cost, that then might limit the amount of air traffic anyway, in which case you wouldn't be having that much of an adverse effect to the environment for the UK anyway. I mean, it would for other countries, and therefore it wouldn't be worthwhile. I mean, it all balances it out in the end anyway. So by trying to stop things and saying, yeah, we stopped this thing from going ahead, which would have helped everyone, you're not helping anyone, quite evidently. So the case was brought by environmental groups, councils, and the Mayor of London. Of course it was. Sadiq Khan, more like Sadiq can't. <laughs> Am I right? There were whoops and jumps of jubilation from environmentalists outside the courtroom after the judgment, BBC environment analyst Roger Harabin reported. Transport Secretary Grant Sharps tweeted that the government would not appeal against the ruling. And I quote, Airport expansion is core to boosting global connectivity. We also take seriously our commitment to the environment. This government won't appeal today's judgment, given our manifesto makes clear any Heathrow expansion will be industry-led. Because allowing the people to make their own decisions. Oh, you can't have that. Oh no, you can't have people making their own decisions. So, the, the people who voted you in, were they people making their own decisions? Oh, so you like that one, but now they voted you in, you want to remove that power? Right, well, I knew a load of backstabbers. I'm sick of this shit. <sighs> bigger and bigger government. <laughs> Conservative only in name. It's just a different colour tie now, isn't it? Thanks, Boris. In an interview, he said that it was for Heathrow and the courts to decide whether the expansion should go ahead. Heathrow Chief Executive John Helen Keane said the airport would challenge the court's decision at the Supreme Court, saying, we think the appeals court got it wrong. Good. We have a very strong legal case, and we'll be making that very firmly. He said, in the meantime, Heathrow would work with the government on a review of its policy to make sure we can demonstrate expansion is compatible with the Paris Accord on climate change. He said, it's one more one way, and you can use the tax to be carbon neutral. Very simple. I'm confident that this issue is fixable. Yes, you're a businessman, not a politician, so you come with solutions, not problems. Well done. And we can work with the government to get on and deliver the expanded Heathrow that Britain needs. Without Heathrow expansion, there will be no global Britain. <laughs> I love that. You play into their own hands. Bravo. Bravo. I mean, you might believe it, actually, but nonetheless, play into their hands. Play them at their own game. Good man. Friends of the Earth, one of the environmental groups that brought the case, said that the ruling was an absolutely groundbreaking result for climate justice. Oh, they've got to use that word justice, haven't they? 
near friends of the Earth. If you really think humans are that bad for the Earth, then allow humans to obliterate themselves because the Earth is still going to live and we'll wipe ourselves out and then it can get back into its own little homeostasis that it had before until there's a, a new developed race which will wipe the planet over and it'll just go over and over again. Like cycles, like Milankovitch cycles, which are responsible for the Earth cooling and warming. Hmm. Will Gundel, head of legal at the campaign group, said this judgment has exciting wider implications for keeping climate change at the heart of all planning decisions. You fucking tyrant. It's time for developers and public authorities to be held to account when it comes to the climate impact of their damaging developments. Not that we actually know what they are, because all your bloody models have been wrong, so why the fuck are we listening to you? Even going by your best estimates, if we really cut it back and go back to the Stone Age, we're going to limit global warming by a whole degree in a year, in a hundred years. So, wow. Wow. So we go back to before the invention of fire, and then the Earth won't warm by a degree C in a hundred years. Oh, that is, that is such a worthy investment. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. We definitely should plow ahead in order to develop our technology to try and find something that is appeasing to everybody, gives a better standard of living at a lower cost to the environment and further on. No, 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 no. We should definitely just go back to the Stone Age right now. That is clearly the best thing to do. Um, any of these talking heads going to do it? Of course they're fucking not. Of course they're fucking not. And the main one is, of course the celebrities flying around on their private jets saying, oh, you can't fly anywhere, it's bad for the environment. And the smaller the plane, the worse it is. <laughs> oh, 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 um, thanks, thanks for uh, preaching from your private jet. Fucking hypocrite. Greenpeace got involved, but who cares? So MPs voted overwhelmingly to support Heathrow expansion in 2018 with Boris Johnson out of the country at the time. Before he became Prime Minister, Johnson pledged in 2015 to lie down in front of those bulldozers and stop the building, stop the construction of that third runway at Heathrow. Yeah, interventionist, fuck off. They have their analysis as well, but we don't give a shit about the BBC anyway, we just have them because they mentioned some news that I can play off of. But we will end with saying, industry lobby group, oh, evil. The CBI said that while all major projects must be consistent with net zero carbon emissions by 2050, it's a bit earlier than that, mate. It's clear that the government and aviation industry need to work closely to agree a robust decarbonisation plan. However, it said it was vital that the Heathrow project be kept on track. And that is also a very, very sorry state of affairs. They have supposedly such a huge lobby group because it is responsible for such a huge industry. And instead of saying like, yeah, yeah, we're, um, we're actually going to talk and use our clout as well. And we're going to come to an agreement that works for both of us. They're actually saying, ah, oh, yeah, but, you know, it is the law, so we all have to go and account how, otherwise um, our freedoms will be taken and we will be imprisoned and we will lose our liberties uh, because, you know, at the end of the day, if you can't reason with this, uh, this person, this monstrosity, then they will lock you up and they will remove your freedom for disagreeing with them. So, um, yeah, we're going to have to agree with them, really. Just show them how we agree with them. And that is a very sorry state of affairs. I'm trying to say, I'd like to do my own thing, but, 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 while I do my own thing, which has nothing to do with you whatsoever, let me show how you'll actually like it, so you'll actually leave me alone and let me do it. But that's, that's where we are. So opportunities for future trade will not wait, said Josh Hardle. Hardy, CBI Deputy Director General. But airline group IG, which owns British Airways, said, we've always said the environmental impact and cost of Heathrow expansion needs independent review. The airport cannot be trusted. Its original £14 billion cost for expansion is now £32 billion. Yes, so it's all down to private investment. And you might say, oh, but because the government never runs out of money, except when it does, but because it never runs out of money, you've got to have government funding such expensive things like this. Now it's £32 billion because... What if you had these investors going into something and then the money ran out and then the project was cancelled? Well, then what are you going to do? Because now the, you know, the, the project hasn't gone ahead, which is for the good of everyone. Two things to that. One is, well, you haven't lost any money because your tax hasn't gone to it at all. It's just the investors who made a mistake. Secondly, chances are, if it's worth doing, but it just became more expensive, that original person who underestimated the cost and brought people on board they would probably lose all of their proceeds because they would have to sell off their unfinished job at a loss in order for somebody else to buy it up in order to then complete it and then they'd reap the benefits unless it 
goes over again, at which point someone else will buy it out and continue on with it, and so on and so forth, in which case you will still get exactly what you're looking for, most likely much quicker than the government, also much cheaper than the government, without having to spend any of your own money, unless you use the service, in which case you're paying back the investors through the airfare tickets. It really is as simple as that. Get the government out, <laughs> just... As John Stossel says, just leave me alone. Let me live my life. But hey, I'm interested to see what you guys have to say on the topic, given that obviously we're all from different places. And whether you're thinking this battle between Heathrow and Gatwick is irrelevant, we should really focus our attention elsewhere. Or if you think, well, hey, yeah, the government should just leave people alone, let people do what they want to do. And if the North is really such a powerhouse that it says, then Manchester will build another runway and be amazing for itself and develop its port system in Liverpool as well and maybe use those canals again, although they look a bit small to me. Use the railway line between Liverpool and Manchester Shore. And if Scotland is overlooked by the government, then Edinburgh and Glasgow are going to increase their capacity as well and they're going to have more cargo come in. And if Heathrow and Gatwick can't sort themselves out, then they're going to move to Manchester and then use the train or Edinburgh and brighten up Scotland. So always interested to hear what you guys have to say. So please let me know down below. And until next time, have a good one.